Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. And tonight we will be discussing the very important role of the sheriff of the court. Now traditionally the sheriff's role, uh, if you remember movies like the American movies, was always a man with a badge and a gun in other jurisdictions. For example, in Spain, a sheriff of the court also has to be a judge. Traditionally, there used to be a sheriff of the Hejaz or the sheriff of Mecca. And usually his position was that of a nobleman and he was entrusted with the running of the city. In other areas, the sheriff of the market in the Muslim market was there to ensure that there was no price cutting illegal goods or illegal transactions. And to try and help us understand the role of the sheriff in the South African legal terrain, I'm joined tonight by my very special guest, uh, Iqbal Mohammed, and I will introduce him fully in a while. But just by way of background, he is the sheriff of uh, the South and Dobsonville area, Rudapurt South and Dobsonville area, And during the period, he was involved in a lot of different uh, activities. For example, he was the chairman of the West Rand Circle of Sheriffs from June 2000 to present. He's the executive member of the Gauteng Association of Sheriffs from 2001 to the present. He does the sheriff's cause. He's a facilitator for training program from 2002 to the present. And he's qualified as an assessor in 2006. Also, by way of background, he is an attorney by qualifications and uh, matriculated in Pretoria and has basically worked for a number of years as an attorney. In May 2007 to 2011, he resigned as a member of the SA Institute of Sheriff and he's one of the founding members and interim chairperson of the National Association of Progressive Sheriffs and he's the chairman of the South African National Association of Progressive Sheriffs. From July 2011 to the present, he was elected as secretary of that organization. Iqbal, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa sure. And thank you for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> now, by way of introduction, we spoke of the role of the sheriffs. Now, what legislation appoints the sheriff? Um, the sheriff is appointed by the Minister of Justice right. in terms of the Sheriff's Act. Okay. There are special provisions in the Act and a special method, a special ways in which the Minister has to go through a certain process uh, through an advisory committee and on that advisory committee the Minister then makes his decision. So you are actually appointed by the Minister? That is correct. So. Do you have to be uh, legally qualified to be a sheriff of a particular area? Uh, It's not absolutely necessary. That's not one of the uh, qualifications that is required. But a legal background certainly assists you uh, in uh, acting in in, in your duties as a sheriff because the two professions are so closely related. Attorneys normally instruct the sheriff as a result of court orders. So everything is interrelated. Although it's not absolutely necessary, it certainly is very helpful to, to have that legal background. Now, I mean, most people are terrified when they hear that mm. the sheriff is at the door. Yes. Uh, you know, what are your powers? What, what are the powers of the sheriff? What are you entitled to do and what are you not entitled to do? Let's first deal with what you're entitled to do. All right. The, the sheriff has got quite a wide range of powers, but this is all regulated in terms of... Uh, 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 statutory laws and regulations. Right. Uh, so a sheriff, for example, in the uh, post-apartheid days, in the pre-apartheid, ju- the, 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 uh, during apartheid, um, the sheriff was the officer who notified the accused that you are going to hang after you've been found guilty. I mean, that's quite serious. And, and the sheriff then used to hire the hangman uh, to, to do the actual hanging. Now, of course, everybody is aware it's, uh, since we've got the new dispensation, the mm. country no longer has any... The death penalty. Uh, the yeah. death penalty no longer. But that was the worst in extreme cases. 
the sheriff right now, uh, the, the right that the sheriff has is essentially uh, to, to, to the powers that the sheriff has is to, uh, he can enter your house in your absence, he can remove the furniture in your absence, hmm. he can attach your goods in your absence. Yes. And of course, if you are there, he can also do that. But essentially, uh, to, to, uh, uh, the, what the sheriff does is serve processes and execute court orders and warrants. Okay, what you said was quite interesting and very, very important because most people think that the sheriff has got limited powers. Like, for example, you just said he can enter your house in your absence. So do you enter in a breaking and entering manner or do you enter in an orderly manner? Yeah. I think I should qualify when I say we, that we can enter. Yeah. I mean, I, the sheriff cannot just walk into a right. person's house without the necessary documentation. Okay, so the uh, first thing is... He has to be authorized, so yeah, there has right. to be some kind of documentation, yes, right? right? So, uh, uh, without that documentation, the sheriff has got absolutely no power. Right. right? It's, unlike the police, uh, you know, it's just not, you cannot enter into a person's house on suspicion. Yes. You have to enter, you've got that, you are empowered to do so by way of a court order. Right. The, uh, uh, the, the, the... So uh, he has a uh, documentation yes. and he has the power of, or, or he's acting under instruction. Under instructions, right. but guided by rules and regulations. Right. So he cannot go beyond those rules and regulations. Okay. So for example, if the court order authorizes you to go into number one Boom Street, right. you cannot walk into number seven Boom Street. Right. So you are limited in terms of where you need to go. Uh, 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 Does he have to take a locksmith with him? Uh, well, depending on the circumstances. Right. If, if, for example, the premises is found to be locked, yes, he needs, uh, firstly, consent from the attorney, yes, uh, to uh, to uh, you know whether he can open the premises or right. not. And if he does enter into the premises, I'm happy you raise the question of a locksmith, right? Because relating earlier to, to to your earlier question, you just can't barge in over there, right? You've got to use what is required in law, reasonable force. Okay. So reasonable force, the most reasonable force would be to use a locksmith, so you're causing the least possible damages. Okay. But you can use a locksmith, and you can use it under circumstances where you're authorized to do so, and where there's no other means of getting into the premises. Now, very importantly uh, is the view that people believe that the sheriff has to meet you face to face and serve this document, court order, or otherwise, on you personally and you have to sign for it. Like you see, in the, again, I think the American movies really uh, color our perception of how things should be done. Yeah. Now, which processes require personal service and which processes require other forms of service? Oh. Any, uh, <clears throat> any process that's going to affect your status. Right. So for example, a divorce right. a summons. Right. It's going to affect your status in the sense that you will, uh, if the divorce order does go through, you yes. are going to be single. Right. Uh, uh, an insolvency order, for example, okay. an application to, to uh, uh, sequestrate you. Okay. That yes. again is going to affect your status. Right. Because if you are, if you do become insolvent, you don't have the locus tendi, the capacity to stand on your own, yeah. you have to act via a trustee who's going to take over your affairs. So those documents, those processes, it is absolutely necessary for the sheriff to serve it on you personally. Right. And it's so important that if it's not served personally on you, and a judge was to look at what you as a sheriff has done with mm -hmm. the process, and sees that this was not served on you pers personally, yes. the judge won't carry on with the procedure. Okay. Uh, 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 the court won't carry on with the proceedings. Now, you know, recently in the press, there's been lots and lots of reports of people losing their homes and mm. lo losing their possessions and their movables. What is the position there? Does the sheriff necessarily have to find you and serve on you? Or what other means are there legally of saying, I have discharged my, my, my duties as a sheriff? Uh, now, <clears throat> again, you see, the, 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 this, this, w w when the sheriff comes and takes your goods, Yes. Uh, it is done by what is called by way of a warrant, or maybe perhaps by a court order, in, in terms of which a court order says specifically remove the vehicle. Right. Now, let's just talk of, on a warrant in general. Yes. Uh, a warrant really tells, uh, 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 or a warrant or a writ, yeah. informs the sheriff that Mr. So-and-so owes Mr. So-and-so so much. Right. Please go and try and recover that money. Right. But obviously uh, there's a judgment, right? Yeah. So, the, the so warrant, there's a court the, order. That's right. right. 
you get a judgment and that judgment is converted into a warrant right. or a court order right. and that is a document on which the, the sheriff is going to act on. Right. So uh, uh, essentially then on that warrant, the procedure is the sheriff goes into the premises yeah. and uh, I looks for the, the, the defendant, the person, the, the execution debtor, the person that owes that money and then demands, he can't do anything else before demanding that Mr. So-and-so, I'm the sheriff, I've identified myself, yeah. I need you to pay 10,000 rand as per this warrant. Now when he demands, uh, let me ask you this, yes. say so you're running a shop, can he get into your till and take out that money or must he ask you, look, I'm here to collect this money, Yes. can you give it to me, but does he have authority to go into your till? Well, not immediately, Right. Yeah, because he must afford you the opportunity in trying to settle the account. Okay. Them. So if you are going to settle the account, why no. should the sheriff put his money in the till when you are complying? Right. Right. Now let's assume that you, uh, that the defendant or the execution debtor, the person that owes the money, is no, is not in the position to pay. Yes. Uh, despite the demand, the person, I don't have the money. Even if I were to go to the bank, uh, I can't uh, raise that money immediately. Yeah. So what the sheriff then needs to do is to secure okay. uh, some assets of that defendant. To, 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 to that satisfy, to satisfy yeah. the judgment. Okay. And the sheriff will then write up goods, right. uh, 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 which in his discretion, he believes, will raise that amount of money. Okay. Now, we, we, you know, we, we, tra we, we come into very, very important legal principles here. Yeah. Just a reminder that you might want to call in. We're opening the lines a little bit early this evening, simply because the matter is so important. Yes. As usual, our number is 011-086-77-00122 or 3. The number appears on your screen and you're welcome to call in. Um, Iqbal, I just want to start with the, the first question that we were asking, which is the personal service and other means of service. Yes, no. Now, often one would say, or when you read the sheriff's return, the sheriff says, I served on a principal door yes. and people are confused. They say, what is a principal door? Is it my gate? Is it my front door? Is it my side door? So what, just, just unpack that for us. All right. I, I think to answer that question, one must first ask oneself, why, why didn't we serve this personally? Right. And you know, uh, the, the, um, it's not always per possible to serve on a person yes, personally. Yes, people are the working, are they're working, not home. They are not yes. at home. They, they may be somewhere else. They have chosen that address, that particular address, where they, they, they require the document to be served, right. uh, although they may be in another province. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, what is then required is the document to be served, because yes. at the end of the day, the wheels of justice have to turn. They have to turn. Iqbal, I'll ask you to pause there. We have a call on the line. Caller, please go ahead. Caller, can you hear us? Okay, so basically we, we were saying that the wheels of justice has to be turned effectively and part of that is service. That's right. Service in certain areas is personal, yeah. like a change of status. That's right. And in other areas there's various forms of service. Yes. So you have, as the sheriff, what do you do? All right, so we have to comply with a set of rules which right. have been set up and which are accepted by the courts. Right. So for example, if you are not there personally, we can serve on anybody else who's in charge at, at, at the premises right. over the age of uh, 18, if my memory serves me correct. Right. Uh, so it, it could be your domestic servant? It could be your domestic. could be your gardener? It could be the gardener. It could be a, a guard. A, a, a guard. It could be a receptionist. Right. As long as you satisfy that yourself that that person is a person in charge, yes. and that person will then hand over to the summons to the appropriate party. Right. Uh, uh, Please, I'll ask you just to pause. We have a call on the line. Caller, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. It's Shafiq Amir Niyad here, Commission of Human Rights. Welcome. Assalamu um, alaikum. Walaikum salam. It's uh, Shafiq Amir Niyad uh, from Human Rights Commission. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. How are you, Iqbal? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Wonderful. Well, I have a question here. Yes. And it, it, it's, a, it's around the issue of dignity. Yes. Now, you know, you, you've outlined the role of sheriff and how they do the execution uh, in various formats. I just think that in terms of legislation. Yes. And in terms of the sheriff act, not so. That's correct. 
Now, the question arises, who gives the power to the anti-land invasion unit and the red end uh, to effect eviction and throw people out all in sundry? Where do they get those powers from? Is that not illegal and unconstitutional? No, and uh, let me explain this. I'm, I'm so happy you raised this because this is a very controversial issue. Now, there are instances where the sheriff is instructed to deal with the eviction. Uh, and of course, again, if the sheriff is instructed, all the paperwork, all the, 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 the documentation needs to be in order. Now, depending on the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the logistics required for that eviction, the sheriff can then hire people to assist him in, assist, uh, in, uh, in uh, 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 executing the eviction. So what happens now is if the sheriff needs to go to a single house, he would normally take his own people uh, and uh, uh, arrange that eviction because he's got sufficient uh, staff and assistance to, to, to uh, uh, execute that eviction. If he needs to go to a squatter camp, it's impossible for the sheriff merely with its staff to execute that execution to that eviction and he therefore uses his own discretion as to whom he should hire but in consultation with the attorneys. Now the experts in handling this type of uh, matters mm -hmm. are the red ends and although the red ends are controversial we have found that uh, 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 hiring these people assists us in uh, uh, executing that, those evictions. You must understand that where there's a court order, the, all the people who are, going to be, uh, who, who, who are going to be evicted are notified well before the eviction, are notified from the very outset when the party that wants to evict them uh, that here's a matter that's in court and you need to attend to court to address this. They are afforded every possible opportunity to go to court. I'll go so far as to say that there are people who complain that the judges are biased and in favor of people living under these conditions. And it is very difficult to get an eviction order. And the judges have to satisfy themselves that all uh, the requirements in terms of, uh, all the human rights requirements in terms of our uh, constitution are met before an order is being given. So wh what the public then sees is only that the sheriff and the red ends are there to evict people who have never been notified that they are going to be evicted. I have never in my 20 years of practice heard people who are being evicted admitting that we have been notified earlier of these evictions. We have been afforded opportunities to go to court. We have been notified that the sheriff may be coming any time during this period to evict us. We've never in my 20 years of experience heard people expressing this view. All that we hear is we've never been given an opportunity, we've never been given a chance to go to court. And I can tell you quite clearly here yeah, that no court will, even in the absence of those people, will simply grant an order to say yes because there's nobody over here uh, to defend the, the, the occupiers, the illegal occupiers, uh, that we are just going to give an order. The court itself will bend backwards in order to ensure our human rights before giving any, granting any order for, for, it, for an eviction. So if I understand you, uh, outsourcing this process to the red ants yes. is legal? Is legal, absolutely. And uh, is, is something that is done when you have large amounts of evictions? Absolutely. Otherwise you'll resort to your own staff? That's right. And is the Red Ants a private organization? It is a private organization uh, who specializes in this type of work. But right. I, I, I must add further over here that in addition to the Red Ants, we ask the police also to be present right. to ensure that neither we nor the Red Ants overstep our bounds. And just you, uh, and because uh, uh, we, we must also fully understand that eviction is a very emotional Yes. Uh, process. Yes, yes. People are angry, people, uh, things may get out of hand. And although the police will, will do not assist in the eviction, that's yes. not their job, the police presence over there is to keep everybody in line. In line. So there's uh, no violence absolutely. and retaliation absolutely. and self-help basically. Absolutely. And, and in that way we believe 
that we, we are doing everything within our powers to, to uphold these enshrined human rights that are written within our constitution. Okay, thank you for that detailed response. Uh, Advocate Amir Mia, I hope, who has been a guest on our show, sure. I hope that answers your question. I have uh, another guest, uh, another call on the line. Caller, please go ahead. Well, Alaikum well, Salaam. Uh, very good show. I must compliment you on that. Thank you. Uh, my question to your guest is, uh, if I have been through a divorce and the stipulated on the divorce that maintenance was paid, but no maintenance was paid or so on, so do I go to the sheriff or do I go to the court to have my maintenance uh, paid to me and my kids? Okay, so you understand. Yeah, I understand the question. Thank you for the question. Um, you, you need to go, you see again, uh, uh, the, the sheriff can only act on a, uh, uh, some process that has been issued from the court. So uh, you need to go to court, uh, to the maintenance officer. Hello? Sorry, we're having a bit of feedback. Uh, can you just uh, oh, listen to us on the... the yeah, you can hang up and listen okay. to the answer. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, what, you need to, you, what you need to do is to go to the maintenance officer in any magistrate's court, uh, explain the problem, get uh, uh, the necessary documentation, uh, and then we will serve on the party that needs to um, uh, uh, pay you the maintenance. Again, if a decision has been made on that maintenance, yeah. That party needs to be brought to court to explain to the court why the maintenance is not being paid. But on, on that particular, so do you have the power for arrest? Or yes. Uh, so, so for maintenance matters, you can arrest an errant uh, debtor or, yeah. or errant party because there's already a court order. That's correct. Right. The, 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 the party then uh, that doesn't comply with the court yes. order is now arrested on the basis of content of court. Uh, and if you are in contempt of court, yes. uh, um, the, the police could possibly arrest you under certain circumstances. Right. The sheriff can arrest you under cir certain cir circumstances. But as I always say, with the proper uh, authority, with the proper documentation. So, so basically the answer to this caller is go back to court, get the proper documentation, yes. get the proper authority, if necessary, uh, see your attorney, then give instructions to the sheriff, and the sheriff will carry it out. The sheriff is an officer of the court, Absolutely. his job is to prevent parties resorting to self-help. Yes. And he has certain rules that he has to abide by. Absolutely. I don't know if your listeners understand the concept of self-help. Oh, right. let's explain Let's it. explain this. Yeah, look, the, the sheriff's role really in, in the um, civil, in the judicial process is, uh, firstly, to notify the parties that there's a dispute between you and someone else, and you now need to go to court right. to settle this dispute. Yes. Uh, so, uh, it's so, so firstly, to notify the parties to go to court. Yeah. Once uh, the, 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 the parties go to court, yeah. or if one party stays away from court, mm. to, after a process, judgment may, may be given or default judgment may be given. Right. Now, what is self-help? Now, imagine for a moment, that there wasn't a court, that there was no sheriff. And the two parties would then argue between themselves yes. as to who owes what. Yes. And the stronger party will, will say, right, fine, uh, I, I've, you owe me 10,000 rand. Yes. Uh, walk into the person's house, conserve the person's house by himself, take out goods that uh, he believes will be to the value of 10,000 rand. Uh, and those goods or made, more. Or more. He might take a diamond worth five million of away. Course. Yes. Uh, but according to him, that, that that diamond is worth five hundred rand. Yes. You see, he values the things himself. Right. Uh, take out goods that doesn't belong to uh, the, the the defendant or right. the guy that owes him the money, uh, and take out uh, uh, the goods to as as you mentioned to much to a much right. higher value. Uh, take out blankets in the middle of sure. winter. Sure. Right. You know, which is yes. you know uh, totally illegal. Right. Uh, so. Uh, in order to avoid that type of a situation, yes. you need an independent, impartial party right. who, who is guided by a very strict set of rules right. to, go, go, to, to go and do what the, you would have done yourself. So self-help is illegal. It's totally, uh, it's not permissible. Right. Uh, 
uh, the only party that is authorized to do that is the sheriff. Okay. Right? And the sheriff has to act very, very impartially over here. Right. Uh, and of course, if, if, if the sheriff has done something wrong over yes. here, there is our governing body, right. which is the South African Board for Sheriffs. Okay, now before we come to an errant sheriff or mistakes made by the sheriff, All right. it's time to go for a quick break. Please stay tuned and join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're tuned to Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. And tonight, my very special guest is the Sheriff of Rudderport South and uh, surrounding areas. And he is talking about the role of the sheriffs and uh, the powers granted to the sheriffs. Uh, we were coming to the point of discussing an errant sheriff and where a sheriff doesn't carry out his duties and what you could do about that. But prior to that, he made a very important reference to the sheriff entering into your premises where you are not the owner of the movables that the sheriff seeks to attach. But before we continue, I understand we have a call on the line. Caller, please go ahead. Uh, we I would like to know uh, if I was unhappy with the services of the uh, sheriff. Yes. What would I do? What is my recourse? Where do I go? Is there an ombudsman? What, what do I do? Excellent question. Thank you. We're just coming to that. Igma? Yes. Um, um, we have a governing body that uh, is appointed by government, uh, by the um, Department of Justice, by the Minister of Justice, called the South African Board for Sheriffs. And uh, this, this is our governing body. And part of this governing body's duty is to regulate the conduct of sheriffs. So wherever the public, uh, and that includes attorneys for that matter, right. are, are, are unhappy with the sheriff's service or feel that uh, the sheriff is being biased, for example, you need to go to the, uh, to the South African Board for Sheriffs. They have a website, and uh, if memory serves me correct, it is www. Dot South African dot South African Board for Sheriffs dot org dot 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 za. There you can uh, you could uh, once you get into the website you could download the the complaint form and there is an explanation as the complaint as to what you need to do uh, regarding the complaint procedure. This then has to be forwarded to the board and the board will then conduct the investigation on your behalf. Where it is found that there has been a transgression, or the, uh, uh, sorry, that uh, there is something uh, seriously wrong, mm -hmm. and it cannot be resolved between the two, between yourself and the sheriff, uh, that sheriff then needs to be brought before a disciplinary hearing, right. and as the consequences of the disciplinary hearing is either he's found guilty or not, there is a strong potential a possibility if he's found guilty of a fine, if it's a more serious offence. Uh, he could possibly be struck off uh, or removed as a sheriff by the minister. So there is this recourse to, uh, for the public. Okay, that's a good uh, comprehensive answer. Now, we were speaking of um, where the sheriff enters your premises, but it's not your goods, yes. your lessee, and uh, the building and furniture are leased to you, but yes. a judgment is against you and the sheriff now comes knocking and he says, I'm writing all this up and you say, but this is my, not mine. The sheriff says, well, I'm still writing it up. What do you do? Yeah, you say again, um, the, the, the procedure is the sheriff uh, uh, acts in terms of the warrant. Mm -hmm. uh, but the sheriff, remember, is not the judge yes. in, 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 in deciding who is the owner of right. the goods. So there's a number of options that come up over here. Firstly, what the, the, what the sheriff or his deputy, the deputy is a person hired by the sheriff. Right. But he essentially has got all the powers and authority, uh, uh, essentially, that the sheriff has. Uh, and that deputy then can then telephone the attorney and say, look, this is the situation here. Would you want me to write up the goods? Or would you want me to look for something else? So I ask uh, you to pause. There's a, there's a call on the line. Yeah. Caller, please go ahead. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello. Yes, the sheriff. Please go ahead, we can hear you. Uh, actually, I will apologize in advance. I will put a straightforward question. My first question to you is how long will 
long does it take the court order to expire? Does an order of the court expire after a certain period? Uh, it depends on which court, uh, because uh, different courts have got different time periods, if, if my memory serves me correct again. Lee. Um, uh, a, a, uh, a warrant needs to be reissued after one year or three years. Uh, a court order can stand for 30 years. Uh, again, depending on whether it's a lower court or a high court, uh, sometimes these things need to be reissued if there's uh, things that have been done on that do document. So it, it's uh, very difficult to give a very specific answer. Uh, or okay, is it from the Labour Court? If it's from the Labour Court. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's no clarity on this because uh, at, the st at this stage over there, there's been some change in the legislation in the Labour Court. Uh, previously, the Labour Court attachment was done in terms of the High Court. It's now been done in terms of the Magistrates Court. So whatever applies in the Magistrates Court will apl uh, 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 applies. And I think that the order... Uh, needs to be renewed within a year. Of course, I'm subject to correction on this, please. Okay. And then, uh, how, how long does it take for a sheriff to serve the, 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 the order to the other party? Again, we, we, as sheriffs, we've, uh, they, we have to serve within a reasonable time. And uh, 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 if you don't serve within a reasonable time, this, is, this goes against the, grade of, the grain of our code of conduct and you can be disciplined. Uh, we okay. normally say between 7 to 10 days, but again, it depends entirely uh, on the circumstances of each case. What we advise the sheriff to do is, if there is difficulty in serving that, uh, in serving that court order, please keep okay. the party who's instructed you informed so that the party understands why there is a delay. And if, the, if, of course, there is uh, 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 insufficient justification for this mm -hmm. delay, then uh, you can certainly go threaten to report the sheriff to the board for sheriffs, or, and hopefully the, the sheriff will then do his work, uh, hoping not to be reported to the board. So um, within seven to ten days, but again, depending on very specific circumstances on each court order. Okay, thank you for your call. We have another call on the line. Caller, please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. I'm a, I'm a colleague of Iqbal, uh, Llewellyn Sharp from Port Loza, Sheriff P. North. Hi, Leo. Uh, hi, Iqbal. Uh, I would just like to request, request Iqbal to mention, uh, also to the viewers, uh, a matter that is that's of great concern to the sheriffs, I think, uh, as well as the public, the illegal repossessions of furniture and especially vehicles by, by uh, tracers and agents. And then another issue I would love him to raise is uh, sales and executions in movable property. If you can say something about that to the public. I will. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for your okay. input. All right, let, let's deal with the uh, repossession of motor vehicles. <clears throat> by agents. By, by agents. Now, this is very, very disturbing, particularly for the profession, because uh, generally, when a court order is granted uh, to the effect that because the, the, uh, the, the party who uh, bought the vehicle under a credit agreement or a higher purchase in, is in default, a court order is granted that the, that vehicle needs to be taken away from that party and handed over to the the borrower, the bank, or whatever. Right. The, the, the owner. The owner, yeah. right. Uh, now, what is very disturbing is that uh, we have found over the last few years that those court orders are not handed over to sheriffs, and they are handed over to tracers. Right. These tracers, uh, with the utmost of respect, we say, uh, by, doing, by walking around with those court orders, give the public the impression that they are the sheriffs or the deputy sheriffs. Okay. And some of them, we have heard of incidents where there was violence involved, where there was damage done to the vehicle. So, so you, uh, you can ask the sheriff for his identification and he Absolutely. can't refuse. Uh, and he, he cannot refuse. Is it that a is, letter of appointment? Or it is a, 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 a badge. card, a badge with, right. the, with the uh, sheriffs or the deputies photograph on okay. them, with the board's uh, contact details okay. where, where, where you can phone through and verify whether the person is uh, the deputy or not. But you see, unfortunately, sometimes people get so panicky that, no, here's a guy, he wants to take the vehicle, 
Uh, sometimes there's a, he hands it over, yes. sometimes there's violence and things. And this negativity flows over onto the sheriff. Right. Uh, uh, we are so what advice would you give to a person? Uh, yeah, phone the police or? Phone the police, uh, please. Uh, you, we advise you strongly. If you suspect that that person is impersonating the sheriff, it is a criminal offence. That's fraud, right? It is fraud. Yes. It is a criminal offence. It is an offence in terms of the uh, uh, civil procedure, the, the, uh, the high court, the yes. high and the low yes, court yes. Is, uh, uh, civil procedure X. And uh, it's absolutely uh, illegal. Could you charge him for theft if he removes the vehicle? You could do that. I don't see why not. And you could, uh, of, of course, call the police in over there and have this person arrested. Right. Uh, uh, you can go to our website and, and see what the procedure is. Well, which website is it? The, the website is www.synapse.org.za. Just repeat that, please. www.synapse.org.za. And from there, you could pick up what you need to do for these, uh, uh, under these circumstances. But it is absolutely illegal. The only person uh, that's authorized to do this, and if it's so stated in the court order, is the sheriff or the deputy sheriff. You have every right to demand identification. You have every right to have a look at the court order. You have every right to ask that person, are you a sheriff or deputy sheriff? And if the court order says that it's only the sheriff or the deputy that can do that, you call the police or you kick that person out uh, from your premises uh, because that person is acting in total violation of the laws. I think, thank you very much. It's a convenient place to stop now for a short break. Please join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to Legal Ease, the show that converts legal jargon into legal ease. Now for the last part of the show, we're going to be continuing with our discussions regarding the role of the sheriffs and the, the point that we stopped just before the break was a fellow sheriff having called in and asking our guests to discuss the role of the sheriffs in attaching immovable property. So, well, what do we understand by immovable property, first of all? Immovable property, uh, in layman's term, the house, and, right. um, uh, all prop uh, the, the house, really. That's the it. flat, that's the house, whatever is that's correct. land and buildings, right? That's correct. Now, what happens is um, where you can't settle your accounts, the sheriff yes. can attach, your, in addition to your goods, um, if that doesn't satisfy the judgment, yes. the sheriff can attach your house right. to satisfy the judgment. And more specifically, where we do attach this is for people who have taken out uh, bonds from the banks right. and uh, who are in default of their bonds. Okay. Uh, it's a lengthy procedure. It does take place. The house is attached. The party is, the, the owner of the house is informed all along the way as right. to exactly what is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and the house is then eventually put up into a, a public auction, for sale in a public auction. Right. Uh, 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 so can that house be sold by private treaty? The house can be sold by way of private treaty. Right. But again, we discourage this because, right. um, um, uh, uh, of course, well, what we're saying is that you don't know the true value of your house yes. until you bring it into an open uh, 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 auction. And that's very important because you can't sell an expensive asset uh, for next to nothing, like we, we hear about uh, assets worth uh, two million rands yeah. and sold at the sheriff's auction for 15,000 rands. It's yeah, no, it does, it does, but you know, again, we must qualify this on the immovable property. Yes. You can sell by private treaty, but with the consent of the bank, because the right. bank has got an interest in your property. And it has a, uh, it uh, has a, f it has a, a bond, security, a real bond, security. Right. Yeah. It has a bond registered on, yes. on your property. Uh, so, but why we discourage people a private uh, treaty is mm. that the party that has offered you X amount, right? Uh, nothing stops that party from coming to the auction yes. and saying, "I am here and I'm offering X amount." Right. Now, you you would not know with absolute certainty whether anybody is going to better that price or not. Right. If you hadn't come to the, if you haven't come to that auction. Yes. You see. Of course. So uh, if you're going to accept that price at that point over there, you are 
losing the, the opportunity of having other people placing in a higher bid on that property. The worst case scenario is that that party that's offered you that amount, yeah. nobody's going to better that offer, right. but you are still then going to sit with the same amount over them. So it's yeah. public, it's transparent, and the best possible price. The best possible now, price. Now, the terms and conditions are regarding the sale in execution yes. by the sheriff have to be advertised. Yes. And do you have to strictly comply with the terms and conditions? For, for example, let's say you describe the property as 550 meters in extent, but it's actually 400 meters in extent. Is that fatal? Yeah, well, again, depending on, on uh, the, 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 the circumstances. We are now, you know... Sorry, but I'll just ask you, to, we have another caller on the line. Please go ahead. Hi. 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 My name is Vincent Snell. Yes. And I'm very familiar with uh, Mr. Mohamed. Hi, Vincent. Uh, he is a facilitator and a assessor with the South African Board for Sheriffs. I would like to know, uh, or would like to, for him to, in particular, to express to the community the fact that when they are approached by uh, sometimes imposters, they need to ask for an ID card. The South African Board for Sheriffs, particularly annually provide chef and the deputy with a ID card and it is, uh, it, is, it is identified by the year, the area that they work in and their name. So if any member of the community is unsure of whom they are faced with, with the person that's coming to their door, they should, in fact, call the South African Board Presidents. Use that ID card. Sorry, we, 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 we seem, I'm sorry, we have a terrible okay. line, but I think we understand the gist of it, and I think we've covered this. But just on that point, yes. thank you, caller. I'm sorry, we just have a very bad line. On that point, is the sheriff's board 24 hours? I mean, what happens if the sheriff no, comes uh, after hours? Unfortunately, not uh, right. uh, open 24 hours. Uh, there, 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 there is this difficulty, and I think you raise a very valid point. And I think the board should now apply its mind as to how to uh, resolve this type of a problem. Right. Because the sheriffs, you know, we, we are on 24 hours, 365, seven days a week um, on standby. Right. Um, uh, uh, so um, uh, uh, things happen. Uh, not at our convenience, right. things happen when they happen and we need to be there. Yes. And of course the public has every right, as I've mentioned, to, to uh, uh, ensure that the person that's coming, that's, that's got all of this uh, authority, yes. that's got all of this, this, this power uh, in entering your house, is in fact the sheriff and not to fly by night, not, yes. not an opportunist. Because your car may go missing, your uh, furniture may go missing, yes. for, uh, as a result of that impersonator entering your house. So, Vince, thanks for raising that, but I think uh, in response to what you said, if you are listening, that uh, the board should really consider some setting up something for after our calls for, for the purposes of verification. But Iqbal, I mean, without being flippant, it appears that uh, one mustn't believe the song that uh, I shot the sheriff but not his deputy. Oh, they, yes. <laughs> it, it's quite dangerous. Uh, and just on that note, uh, there must have been some incidences as a uh, role as, uh, as a sheriff that you remember quite funny. I remember... There was a matter where somebody tried to serve on a farm and he was chased by the bull yeah. uh, on that farm. I mean, you must have had... Yeah, I've had a few. I should look personally, I've, I've had uh, firearms pointed at me. It's quite I've dangerous, had, uh, this vehicles, occupation. Vehicles uh, being driven, uh, so people trying to drive me over the vehicles. I've had, um, and, and my deputies and all other sheriffs, I'm not referring to myself sure. specifically, uh, there, there, there appears to be this total, uh, the, they are the majority of the people are respectful, the majority of the people are co you know, co cooperative, yes. the majority of the people understand. But it's unfortunately just this handful that makes life very difficult. Uh, I've had petrol bombs placed under my vehicles. Uh, sure. 
I get SMSs that people know where I'm going, where I'm living, and they're going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and and. Uh, but you're a mere um, messenger. You're a you're a messenger of a legal process. Yes. By an authorized uh, uh, authority, the, yes. the, the 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 courts. I mean. Uh, on that point, what about small claims judgments? Are you entitled to execute? Yes. Uh, the, the small claims, the, the plaintiff, the party, the complainant, let's put it that way, yes. uh, can serve his own summons. Right. Right. Uh, but when it comes to, well, once that complainant then gets judgment, right. then, the, then the, the warrant is handed over to the sheriff. Again, removing the self-help and, and, um, and... Avoiding all of, all of those problems. That okay. is correct. That is correct. Now, um, you know, we were just discussing this issue of immovable property and salient executions by the banks. Yes. Now, let's say you buy a property at the sheriff's auction. Yes. Uh, is the sheriff uh, obliged to reveal to you what the rates and taxes are outstanding on that? Uh, in terms of our the new regulations that have come in, yes. uh, is essentially one should look at it uh, in, in this way. In order to protect that consumer, the customer, the guy that's bidding out over there, Right. You need to disclose as much information to that customer in order for that customer to make uh, a, 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 an informed decision. Right. So uh, uh, the rates in Texas forms part of this informed decision. Right. And they were, there is case law where the, even though the rates in Texas were given, mm -hmm. and this is uh, normally given by the council, by the uh, uh, municipalities, right. to the attorneys that have hand over this information to us, even though the amount has been given and it later turned out to be the incorrect amount, yes. there was a substantial difference. Yes. That sale was cancelled. Okay. So, you know, the things as to the extent of the prop property, as you mentioned earlier, that is one of the re possible reasons why the property can be cancelled. The usage of the property. Yes. You may be thinking you are buying a, a, a property with business rights. Right. And it turns out that it's an uh, ordinary residence. Right. And by the same token, the owner of that house, assuming the owner of that business, yes. uh, can come up to the sheriff and says, you've advertised my property as a, 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 an ordinary residence, yes. and you, you therefore sold it for a lower price. Yes. Whereas, in fact, you could have sold it for a higher price right. because it is a business. Yes. And I therefore want, yeah, uh, as the owner of this property, I want that sale to be cancelled, yeah. oh. and the, the sheriff then has to also protect the owner's rights over right. it. You see, so it cuts both ways. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of instances where uh, uh, the, the sales are cancelled, again, where, where the purchaser doesn't comply with what is required from him. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, th th these things do happen. Unfortunately, uh, viewers and Iqbal, we've run out of time. It just, um, I have a few seconds to basically thank you very much uh, for joining me tonight and really imparting a lot to the public. I'm sure that the public have been greatly enriched by you and, and the knowledge regarding the office of the sheriff, what kind of relief they can seek against an errant sheriff, but more importantly, how to approach a sheriff and who to approach when a sheriff pretends to be the sheriff or some other party. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having joined us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Ashur. You're welcome. Thank you.